So can we just journey back? You were only young when your mum died. Do you remember what emotions you went through at that time? Oh gosh, every emotion under the sun, I think. I was 20 when my mum died and I was so confused by what happened. I was angry. My faith, you know, went through a real crisis because I'd never really experienced um, anything so traumatic as a bereavement. And suddenly this God that was so good, I was like, oh, hang on actually this is I'm quite angry at you now and this is quite painful and I don't understand it and yeah gosh it was just every emotion possible and then there'd be days where I would feel you know genuine happiness because of something that was happening and then I'd feel guilty uh, for feeling that happiness you know and wondering if I could ever be sort of normal again and, and happy again oh gosh it was yeah everything everything all at once I think now I know there'll be a lot of teens young adults who will perhaps go through grief and find it hard to know how to process it what to do with all those emotions so having come out the other side yourself how would you sort of advise people to to handle it or process what they're feeling I think the most important thing is to let that happen and you know accept that it's actually really normal to be feeling all those emotions you know really confused not knowing sort of if you're coming or going most days especially in the first few months or years after the bereavement it can be you you can feel sort of overwhelmed I think by your emotions and you sort of have to let that happen I think it's really important when you're ready to start talking about, about how you're feeling that might not be straight away and there might be different people that Uh, you know people want to chat to so it might be a friend it might be a family member it might be someone unconnected like your GP or a counsellor but it's important to be talking to someone because then you I think as you start to talk about the emotions you can almost make sense of them a bit easier as you verbalize them and get them out also something that I found so helpful is writing things down you know keeping a a diary or a journal or even just jotting things down occasionally Um, again just you know letting them out getting them out of your head um, and onto paper can sometimes be really really helpful but but what you know whatever timeline that looks like it is absolutely fine there's no sort of right way to process grief and if that if that takes weeks or months or years that's absolutely fine no, I said, you know, kind of you're out the other side of it. And I didn't mean that as in, you know, you ever necessarily get over grief and, and the loss of a loved one. But I would imagine, Bev, there must be moments where there are certain things or situations or moments or even songs or sounds that must trigger the memory of your mum. Do you find that you still even all these years on? Absolutely. So I'm five years on from losing my mum now, which sort of feels like both a lifetime that I haven't had her with me and also no time at all. Only this weekend I sort of found a a note from her and her handwriting just really caught me off guard, you know, and and made me remember lots of things. And it was both wonderful and really painful. And I think that's the reality for a lot of people. You never get over grief, but you, you can journey towards a place where I was able to sit and look at this note and feel both happiness and sadness rather than just the sort of overwhelming pain that I felt you know quite early on but there's loads of things that still trigger me and actually during this lockdown it you know there's so much around us so much sort of you know trauma and and unknown and lack of control and that that can be very triggering for someone who's been bereaved because we've been there before you know (laughs) Some of the feelings that I'm experiencing are, are very sort of recognisable to me and, and not in a good way, you know, they remind me of quite a painful time. So, yeah, lots that's triggering, but actually sometimes it's really lovely to to say, hear a song, like you said, and remember mum in a really positive way, you know, and and associate that with just the love and the joy that I remember her for. Yeah. Now, one of the positive things to come out of this Beth is that you are now helping to facilitate and coordinate helping other young adults in their 
grieving process. Let's talk about loss is the organisation. So tell us a little bit more about that and what it exists for. Yeah, well, I started Let's Talk About Loss uh, back in 2016 as a blog. Um, and then a couple of years later, started our meetups, which are now the sort of bulk of our work. And essentially, it's just having friends who are bereaved, you know, when we're, we're not trained counsellors, we don't we don't know um, you know everything that there is to know about grief we're all still learning but we're we're sort of a group of young adults aged 18 to 35 who have experienced a bereavement and therefore just know what it's like you know and so we meet up every month when we can obviously at the moment we're all meeting on zoom <laughs> um but you know back in back when we were able to we might go to the pub, we might go to the park, we might go to an art class um, and just spend time together chatting in a really safe place um, where, you know, you can, my friends have been wonderful supporting me with grief, but luckily lots of them haven't experienced grief. So it's lovely to have, you know, a group of friends yeah. who are the same age as me, they live in the same city and they've experienced bereavement. So they totally get it. Yeah, absolutely. I would imagine, though, that for some people, when they come to one of these meetups, either online or in person for the first time, they might be a little bit sort of reluctant to start talking about grief because it is quite a big thing, isn't it? So how, how do people manage to start opening up about these things? Yeah, absolutely. We never force anyone to talk about their loss. If, if they're not ready, that's absolutely fine. You know, you don't have to sort of sit down and say who you are and who you've lost straight away. But I think actually the conversation often flows quite naturally. So we don't spend the whole evening talking about grief. We'll talk about, you know, the football scores or the weather or whatever anyone wants to talk about. But it tends to come up quite naturally. And each of our group has two or three hosts who are um, sort of given a bit more support by me and, and know how to start that conversation if and when people feel ready to talk. And I think once someone says something like, oh, you know, I'm really missing my mum today, mm. it, it creates that space where it's okay to then say, actually, yes, yeah, so am I, or oh, I'm really missing yes. my brother. And I think because people in, in sort of wider society don't say that, the conversation just never gets started. And it's really simple. Sometimes you just need to say one one little thing and suddenly everyone's off you know talking about it because they're so desperate um, to talk about it finally yeah absolutely so Beth if people want to find out more can you give us the website address that people can go to to either find out about the meetups or for themselves or to recommend to others absolutely it's www.letstalkaboutloss.org and we're also on social media so just search let's talk about loss Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us in these unusual times and keep up the great work and just pray that you would know God close to you in all that you're doing. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting to me. It was wonderful.